uh, is a, um, a person who is a commander, a pilot, or a crew uh, member of a, a space ship. Uh, Egypt until this moment uh, does not have a space agency, but we hope in the future we have this uh, important kind of uh, science to uh, discover space. And uh, to know more about the profession of an astronaut, we are having with us uh, a, a, an astronaut to be, Mr. Akram Abdullahi. Hello, sir, and welcome to our show. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, good, good afternoon. Now, I'd like to know first, what uh, got you interested in that field? Uh, well, from the beginning, when I was young, my, my father was a military officer mm -hmm. who was in the field uh, of um, aircraft defense mm -hmm. and he used to read more mm -hmm. books about aircrafts and rockets mm -hmm. and that was from, from the first day I was really interested to, to aircrafts in space and rockets. That was the beginning of the spark which started everything. So, um, uh, Dr. Afram, uh, of course, um, being an astronaut is something very special and very different. So tell us more about your project and what you're going to do about uh, this. Well, uh, being an astronaut is uh, for a description of a job is, uh, is a man or a woman who make an experiment in the space for any kind of a science field. But in order to be qualified, you ha must have certain um, properties or certain qualifications. So you, have, you must have the educational uh, background about space, you must have the skills, you may be a pilot, a diver, so you, you can be qualified to go to space. But the project which I am uh, working on, it, we are planning to study the atmosphere of the height of 100 kilometers. Yeah. And this kind of height, it's very high for a normal aircraft and it's very low for a satellite. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need like a special aircraft and why uh, two astronauts or four astronauts go there, take samples and go down. Now, um, what was your major? What did you major in? I majored here in communications. But, uh, because uh, here there is no many uh, opportunities to work in aerospace. Mm -hmm. So I was comparing between communications in order to work in satellite communications or materials to work in uh, rocket materials. But at the end I, I choose uh, communications. So you work as a researcher at the Munich, Uni uh, at the Munich University and uh, somehow you are working with NASA yes. uh, through your university. So tell us more about this. Well, actually uh, I'm working, I have two positions. I work at the Technical University in Munich and I'm working at the German Aerospace Center, which is called DLR. Mm -hmm. But uh, the space agency in Russia, Europe, or NASA, it's, or it's always the same thing. So the International uh, Space Station, for example, the ISS, it's a cooperation between all space agencies around the world. So when you work in a space agency in Europe, in Russia, in Japan, or in America, so you work, you work in corporate projects. That's mm -hmm. why I work at the DLR, the German Aerospace Center, but I work in cooperation with NASA in various projects. Because at the end, our work is to bring information for all humankind, not mm -hmm. for a certain country. Mm -hmm. Now, being an Egyptian in NASA, how challenging was that for you? It's very challenging because mainly uh, you have to, to be more uh, qualified than the other people. So that's why uh, I had to work with my yourself as a person or as an individual and that's how the other space agency can pick you. Mm. Um, uh, Dr. Akram, um, of course space has lots of mystery from t until this moment. Many things we didn't know until now. So according to your study, wh what is the recent thing that uh, they reached in the space? What's new there? Well, uh, there is a misled idea that uh, we are going to space to learn about space. But actually, we go for two main reasons. Uh, first, to learn about space and discover the universe. But the second uh, important thing is to um, uh, increase the technology for our lives. So, uh, space study uh, gave us uh, the GPS, the satellites, which we use in our life. It gives us the optical lens which we use in all our smart cameras and smartphones.
So space technology, space experiments uh, also uh, help us here on Earth. And actually 60% of NASA projects are targeted to study Earth somehow, not the universe. Mm -hmm. How to look f to Earth from an outside point of view and try mm -hmm. to study it as a whole. Mm -hmm. But discovering the universe, there are many, many, many new discoveries that here actually we had uh, the first sense of a gravitational wave which uh, in, in, in NASA GPL and which uh, helped us to discover how the black hole of uh, the astrophysics work give us some information about it and also we discovered uh, I guess last year a little bit of, 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 of ice water mm -hmm. on Mars and Mars is very helpful for us because Mars is uh, it's called a sister planet to Earth so if we try to understand Mars because Earth is a much more complicated planet. So if we uh, try to understand Mars more easily so we can uh, reverse engineer the idea and try to understand our planet more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's our two main discoveries last year. Now you've mentioned what you had to do to apply uh, to NASA, but what about the qualification needed in an astronaut? What, the, what did they ask? And uh, uh, how did you qualify? Th there's not a solid qualifications, mm -hmm. but there are some uh, uh, like border lines. Yes. So you must uh, have a space uh, science background. Mm -hmm. So a uh, scientist, engineer, mm -hmm. you must have the skills of a pilot. So if you are a pilot, it's more, more preferable because the pilot uh, knows how to handle uh, catastrophic problems, how to communicate, mm -hmm. how to so pilot skills is important mm -hmm. and uh, scientific background is much more important and also if you if you know more than one language is preferred because you have this culture opening because not all astronauts are coming from the, from one country. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's mainly preferable to have like four languages so you can have the chance to communicate with all astronauts more easily. Mm -hmm. So there is no a solid qualification, but mainly the educational and scientific background is more important one. Sir, we we always hear about uh, aliens. What? Uh, aliens. A aliens. Yes. Uh, uh, we watch movies of aliens and yes. we read stories about aliens and we, uh, you know, people sometimes dream of aliens. Yes. And we every now and then we hear that there is life on the other uh, planets. Uh, somehow they discovered water, they, yes. they discovered uh, something uh, weird at some planet. So, yes. is there life in any other planets or it's just a fake idea? No, I can, I, I can, it, it would be really uh, rude to say there is not another life because it's a very big universe. But uh, as a scientific fact, we didn't find anything yet. But that's, that's a fact in a scientific hand. But we can't say as a fact there is no no other life. Uh, but uh, we don't know any idea about it. But there are two two main uh, points in this part. First, we cannot say there is not. And second, there are there are many things in the universe that still now we cannot understand. Mm -hmm. So there is still much happening, much happened that we cannot understand. Mm -hmm. But we only in NASA or any space agency we only hand in facts which we are in, in our hands. So till now in our hands we discovered ice water in March and the presence of water is, is, uh, is um, a point that there was alive or there is alive but still now we didn't discover anything yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as a scientist I cannot say there is something and also I cannot say there, there will be not a something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now since 2011 you've been working on a, a project. Yes. Could you tell us more about your project? Uh, which project? Well, it is uh, associated with the uh, GLR. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, uh, also uh, in a, uh, as a development engineering project. So, would you tell me? Can you tell us the one that you like? Yeah. Well, I joined the GLR in 2011, mm. and we have lots of projects, uh, which mainly uh, we use uh, aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, normal aircraft, but we modify the aircraft to do experiments in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. so we want to study the atmosphere, the amount of carbon dioxide, uh, we uh, develop new radar systems and then we use our aircraft as a DLR and try to use it to, to understand the atmosphere more. Mm -hmm. So there is a part of space and part a nautical part of an aircraft. Mm -hmm. So there is a problem um, when uh, space people talk about it is the gravity. 
yes. outside. Yes. And uh, many astronauts, we, we hear about them, that they suffered from the zero gravity, gravity yes. on space and they face some problems. So tell us more about this. Yes, exactly. Uh, the problem is uh, we are created to live on Earth. So our bodies, uh, our bones, our muscles are created to make us stand up against the gravity field. So there is a force pushing you down and your body stands up against this force. Mm -hmm. That's a problem in, uh, on space, there is no such force. So uh, your body, uh, as usual, adapts the new environment. So mm -hmm. the problem you, you you have bone loss and muscle loss and decrease in bone, decrease in calcium, decrease in, in, in muscles, decrease in every uh, kind of, uh, of system which try to adapt the gravity. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when astronauts stay in the ISS like for six months without working out, they cannot walk on Earth when they come back because there is no bones left to walk. So that's why he has to stay in bed like for three months in order to regain his calcium, regain his bone, regain his muscles. So that's why each astronaut must do like two hours or three hours of cardio on the International Space Station. So they, they do the, the run mill when they are attached by cables to the ground because they are floating and then they run minimum three hours per day in order to keep their body uh, feeling the gravity and feeling the gravity. But they are feeling. human being again. Because they are human being. Yeah. And that, uh, there were two astronauts uh, two years ago who stayed in the who stayed in the International Space Station for one year in order to see uh, the capabilities of medicaments and uh, this kind of training are they enough to, to regain the body muscle in order to know if you are able to go to Mars or not because Mars trip is about nine months okay. so we have to know if the astronaut could handle this kind of duration in zero gravity or not okay. so the astronaut suffered but with, with the right type of medicaments and training on the ISS in space okay. it, it, the problem is solved so right now, if, if you're doing the training while you're in space, it's no longer a problem, hopefully. Yes, yes. Now, for yourself, how are you training? Like, are they giving you certain exercises? Uh, are you preparing yourself in certain ways? Yes. Well, uh, the first point is prepare yourself to handle the equipment, where, which you are doing the experiment. So we have to do more trials, more trials, in order, because uh, in space you will have only one shot, and that's why we need to make uh, this kind of experiment. It's like eating, mm -hmm. like intuitive, not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to do it a lot, a lot, a lot. And then another other training is <coughs> you are trying to, to simulate uh, the space environment of launch and re-entry in Earth. Mm -hmm. So when you launch or you enter in the Earth, there is a high g-force in your body. And that's why we want to know if you would uh, sustain this kind of force. And that's why we sit in a, in a, in a, in a, in a room, and this room uh, rotates very fast in order to know if your body would handle such force. So in the, there are two points of training. is working in the equipment and science goal of the, of the mission to try to train your body of what kind of, of, of effects will be happening in your body during the mission. Okay, well, you mentioned uh, eating, so is there a certain kind of food an astronaut should eat in the space? Uh, on, on Earth, no, you have to eat healthy, you have to eat healthy. No, I, I mean on, 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 on the ISS or on the space mission, it's really a difficult thing because the food uh, comes with cargo and it's very expensive. That's why the astronauts usually eat uh, powders, like how babies eat when they are very young. So we eat some kind of powder because it's 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 have uh, strong nutrition and also it is very easy to equip and launch to the ISS. And a funny fact is 90% um, of all this kind of uh, powder nutrition babies food are uh, are, uh, are calculated from astronauts uh, technology or astronaut food. So the the scientists work on this kind of nutrition to make it a powder. And then the baby uh, companies uh, we will use this powder for the babies, and that's how it, it comes from. So it's a torture mission. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's, it's a very hard one, yeah. but uh, the view is very perfect. So Amazing. you have to pay it. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you're looking forward to the view. Yes, of course. Now for the mission itself. Now they are they are preparing all of you. Now, what have they given you a certain mission, or once you're trained, they tell you what the mission is? 
No, we know the mission. We know that we are gonna study the atmosphere. There are kind of clouds, very high clouds mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. We want to study this kind of, of clouds. Uh, and we are trained to do the mission a lot. But uh, uh, it's, only, it's always tricky to know when you are going to fly. Because there are very uh, politics involved and very a lot of, 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 of dates, or a lot of variables you cannot control. So any astronaut or an astronaut candidate must train each year hard, waiting for the call that you're gonna fly this day, this time. So we are trained for the mission, we know the mission, mm -hmm. but we are not, we, are, we have no idea when and who we're gonna fly first. Every now and then we hear that um, NASA or uh, I don't know, it's a space agency is organizing a trip to space. Yes. for the rich people and yes. he has to pay a huge amount of money in order to go to space yes so how this could be accomplished and it's, it's, it's is, it, is it easy for an easy person to just go to space it's not easy but it's doable it's just like flying so when you fly at the first at the beginning it was a, uh, an, a crazy idea to use an aircraft and fly and right now you just pay for the ticket the pilot do everything and you just sit and pay for the, the ticket Mm -hmm. So NASA, not only NASA, many commercial uh, companies have the same idea that you're gonna pay for your ticket and go to, f to fly in space for like an hour or two and then go back. It's, it's actually doable and are, the companies have, be, have already started testing the equipment to fly. Mm -hmm. But what is the difference between an astronaut and a rich guy? Of the course. astronaut is like the pilot. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who is commanding, controlling and doing everything. And the guy, uh, the tourist sitting back there enjoying the view. And actually, uh, each astronaut always say that you usually don't have that kind of time to enjoy the view, just seconds. Well, and then we, you hope, have to go to uh, we hope that you enjoy the view and that uh, you'll continue uh, the mission properly and that you'll be our first uh, Egyptian, uh, not candidate, but astronaut yeah. in space. Thank, thank you. you very much, Dr. Akram Abdul Latif. Thank, thank you very much thank for this interview. Much. And we will be having a quick break, but stay tuned for more coming up on Nile Cruise. Thank you.